This music is borderline unsingable, and that is the point. He creates, through the nigh on impossible, a palpable sense of striving beyond what any of us can afford to give. Composing this affirmation of faith, Beethoven quite literally pushed himself to the brink. elevation of every member of the human species. That was the thing. Now, some people complain that, uh, well, that he had too high an opinion of himself and too little of his fellow men, but those of us who counted ourselves among his friends knew that what he wanted was to rise above the sordidness of life and through his music to bring the rest of us with him. Ludwig, he was well into his fifties by then, of course and known throughout the city as the most famous musician in Europe. But much as they may deny it, the fact is that Viennese taste is neither sophisticated nor elevated. And during those days, the more challenging music of my friend Beethoven was not so much in vogue. Rossini and his cronies is all everybody wants these days. No, Italians. It's this paralytic regime. It allows no freedom of expression, no freedom of thought. What? Walls have ears. London's the only place to be now, Stefan. You see, the English, they would never tolerate spies or censors. Ludwig, please. Of course, I don't want any wine, Schindler. Doctor's orders. Can't hear, can't drink, can't shit. Thank God poor Beethoven can compose. Eh? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, the problem wasn't so much that he was loud, but that he was never discreet, even during those dangerous years after the wars. But somehow he would always get away with it. Perhaps because people started to think that he was going a little crazy, you know, a benign madman. Of course, he was nothing of the sort. An eccentric, certainly. He could shock people in the street. And in certain details, he was very, very particular. Coffee, for example, is essential nourishment. He would prepare himself. His procedure, worthy of the Orientals. 60 beans, precisely. And, of course, they had to be counted out. 48, 50, 52. In 1822, Beethoven received a commission for a new symphony from London's Philharmonic Society. It had been over a decade since he'd written his last, the eighth, but he was, in fact, already thinking about creating... Two great symphonies, each different from each other, and each different from all my other ones. Let 
dread beginning works of this magnitude. Well, once I've started, it's uh, yeah, everything's fine. Once again, Beethoven was thinking in terms of a pair of symphonies. But continuing ill health prevented him from going to England as he'd hoped. And it wasn't London that saw the premiere of his Ninth Symphony. Carl's school fees are due. Schindler. Isn't that this? Do not allow your latest offspring to appear as foreigners. Appear soon among your friends, your admirers, your venerators. Hmm. I think that's very beautiful. Put on a concert of my newest works in Vienna. No? Mm. Come on, Schindler. We're going for a walk. Might actually be able to make some money. Naturally, there was an immense amount to organize before such a concert could take place. And in that, I was, as always, there to assist. Well, just tell the scribes to copy my score exactly as I've written it down. Hmm? And we still need a hall. We'd better write to Dietrich Stein, see what he can do. exciting about the opening of the Ninth Symphony is how the music emerges from nothing, from the dawn of time, as it were. And this sense of high drama was enthusiastically seized upon by many later composers. Out of the darkness there shall be light. Dietrich Stein says no. Well then find another hole, Schindler. His expenses. I mean the copyist bills alone. How many copyists do we need? Hmm? Fine. Then, Schindler, tell them that I asked them to copy out the words and the music as they were written, and I find they've done almost exactly the opposite. It's almost as though they've done it on purpose! Of course they can play it. And we must make sure they get the speed right. Excellent invention. Very useful. We've been at it for weeks. Day and night, that thorny, vulgar wretch at Schindler. I'm as roasted as this veal. <laughs> but wait till you hear it, Stefan. Wait till you hear it. The premiere of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony would become a milestone in musical history. With this massive work, Beethoven raised Western music to an unprecedented level of urgency, power and meaning. In its final movement, in the most direct and public way, he would share his belief in humankind and a universal brotherhood through a setting of Schiller's Ode to Joy. For the first time, a symphony included voices.